Back to Brian's Beat. Come on and see, see, see. Tennessee Tuxedo. D, D, D. Tennessee Tuxedo. We will be parachuting for your pleasure. Sailing seas in search of treasure. Anything so he can measure up to men. That's Tennessee Tuxedo. A small penguin who drives a tan tuxedo. Though he may fail. Hour two of Brian's Beat. Welcome. I'm Brian. You know, the only show born at the apex of freedom, entrepreneurship, and nomadism. Let's talk about this freedom, which I always thought was enshrined in our Constitution, but maybe not. Maybe not. The city of Peabody, North Shore, Peabody. All of the things that are going on. The city council in Peabody is considering what's known as a generational ban on tobacco products. Not every councilor is for this. But the mere fact that it's coming up and it's coming up courtesy of the Peabody Board of Health. So as we talk about this, I want you to think about your city or town. You could be New Bedford. You could be Fairhaven, a Cushnet, Freetown, Wareham. You know the communities around here, Dartmouth. Fall River. Here's what's being contemplated by Dr. Julia Fleet, who is a member of the Peabody Board of Health. She said this at a meeting. We're not outlawing it. This isn't a prohibition on tobacco. It's just a statement that Peabody, and as the Board of Public Health, that we recognize that smoking continues to be detrimental to health and the leading cause of cancer. But it doesn't stop folks from smoking. Here's here's what the measure does. If it were to take effect, anyone that comes into Peabody or lives in Peabody, you would no longer be able to go to a convenience store. You could get a scratcher ticket. You can get booze. I don't know if Peabody has pot shops. You could buy pot. But you would be prohibited from buying tobacco. My guess is this would also include vaping. Anyone under, excuse me, anyone 21 and older. So figure this out because the date is born after January 1, 2004. So even after you turn 21, you wouldn't be able to allow, you would not be able to buy tobacco products in Peabody. It does not prohibit you from going. I know some of the cities and towns around Peabody. It doesn't stop you from going to Danvers. It doesn't stop you from going to Wakefield. Lynnfield. Lynn. Salem. So you can go to one of the surrounding communities... And buy your Marlboro or or your Chesterfields and then come back to Peabody and smoke like a chimney. So what I see here is a board of health that's trying to stick it 
stick it to the retailers that sell tobacco products because folks that turn 21, they can't buy it there, but they'll go to another town because they're not going to quit vaping. They're not going to quit smoking unless they want to. It's not going to make for a healthier Peabody. So what would you think? I know we're, th- this is a story from Peabody. But what if the Board of Health in New Bedford or the Board of Health in Fairhaven, Board of Health in Dartmouth, let's recall those three communities back in the early 2000s, they pretty much ganged up. And they led the, the stampede for folks to stop smoking in restaurants and bars. Remember that? I mean, that's been a long time ago. I'm, I'm an ex-smoker. I like going into establishments where I can breathe the air without any problem. But I like to believe that I have the choice because... Maybe I'll, I'll breathe some of that crappy air if there's somebody there, a group that I want to see, a, a person who's a friend that I want to meet up with who happens to be a smoker. Because, quite frankly, I still have friends who smoke. And sometimes I'm around them inside a building, outside, whatever the case may be. That's my choice. And, of course, I'm older than 21. I mean, th- this is... This is targeting not just folks that are minors, but now that you have become an adult, the second adult age, which would be 21, you can't buy in your city or town. What would you do if there was a law like that on the books in New Bedford, in Fairhaven, a Cushnet, Mattapoisett? Dartmouth. Or do you think the time has come? Nobody in in your city or town who isn't 21 by, by 21 would never be able to buy a tobacco product in your city or town. If I'm a business owner, I would be ripping, absolutely ripping. And I'd be ripping somebody a new one. Can you believe this? One of the city councilors, Ann Manning Martin, has concerns if the if the city should follow the lead of other other cities and towns that have actually enacted something like this. Brookline, you know, Brookline is one brick short of a load anyway. But I mean, Peabody? I can't imagine that in New Bedford where you've got a lot of people who are smoking before the age of 21. Can you can you see the folks in New Bedford? Well, I got to get on the Surta bus. Well, at least the bus is free. I can ride out to Fairhaven or Dartmouth. Unbelievable, right? Well, that's that one. There's more, as as the saying goes. How about this one? You know, here we are. We we talk about whether or not we should have some type of ballot question that would help uh, decide if if the Commonwealth should be a sanctuary state. In Northampton, western part of the state, Northampton, they're looking for the city council to pass a resolution declaring Northampton a sanctuary city for folks that are transgender, or gender diverse. Yeah. I'm not making this up. There are two city councilors that are really pushing this. 
for trans rights, equal protections, and access to gender-affirming health care. Your thoughts, 508-996-0500. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Brian. Oh, that's good. Uh, my name's Jim. Hey, anyway, Jim. Uh, I was just coming down Tocken Hill Road. I was the third car in line, and the gates went down for the train, the commuter rail. It took 42 seconds from the time the gates went down till I was driving through the gates. Just for those two ladies that called up and said it was going to take all this time, 42 seconds. And there were nine passengers plus the engine. Just for food for thought. How fast was the train going? Uh, well, it came to a dead stop, honked a horn four times, then proceeded to pass through the Tocken Hill Road. And maybe five miles an hour. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's good that it slowed down. I I don't know that it's always going to be that way. It's going through a test cycle right now. But uh, Um, the the gates uh, really shouldn't take that long to come down. They come down. They go up. Right. Right. They go down quickly. They went up quickly. I cannot see that train or any train passing through. This is just my opinion. Going through Tocken Hill Road or Nash Road at 80 miles an hour. I just can't see that. Uh, that that is, if they do that, that's asinine. I would agree with you, but I think it would be asinine if it's going forty or forty-five. Exactly, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But this, but particular, it came to a dead stop. Gates came down. Well, the gates came down first, then came then the train came to a dead stop. Honked its horn, that loud horn, for about four times, and then proceeded very slowly through the Tocqueville Road and it was seven seven uh, cab uh, trains of uh, passengers trains and plus the engine and like I said 42 seconds the gates were up and we were passing through. All right. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. You too. 508-996-0500 to get hey, on Brian, to the good show. Morning. Brian is here. Good morning to you. Hey, good. Good to hear, you, uh, hear your voice, Brian. Thank you. Uh, on the train, and I want to talk about uh, Peabody doing away with uh, cigarette sales. Sure. Yeah. They're going to do away with cigarettes, but they're going to have pot shops. So they're going to be selling a lot of pot. And uh, and also our state on the uh, ballot, one of the ballot questions, question number four, is uh, to legalize and regulate uh, natural psychedelic substances. So people are going to get as high as a kite and they're going to be high on pot, but they're not going to be able to smoke cigarettes. Does that make sense to you in this upside down state? Uh, no, it doesn't. And I don't know if you notice uh, on the Serta buses, uh, when I look at them, there's Billy, you're lucky if you got half a dozen people right, right in the, the Serta bus. I can't imagine there being a lot of people going uh, back and forth from Boston. And and mind you, it's for free now. And uh, Sarah, they yes, put more yeah. funding until 2025. You can go on a sort of bus and you don't pay a dime. How true? How true? Um, you know what I mean? I, I would like to think. But you know what? That's a great question. You you you, you didn't really put it in question form, but you, you've led to another question. Will more people ride a sort of bus on a on a weekday, then take the commuter rail to and from Boston. And another thing is they keep talking about jobs, and there's a lot of jobs up in Boston, but there's not as many jobs, especially uh, we know now with downsizing a lot of these companies, uh, uh, downsizing the, the number of people in their, in their headquarters. So uh, I don't see all these jobs that they're talking about. Why can't we create jobs in our own city instead of these big giant turbines? I mean, since the mayor has been, he was elected in 2011, I've never seen other city go down and down the, um, the toilet bowl the way it's going. And this guy's been here 12 years. Mayor Kalis might have been what he was, but our city was better off. You know, let's create jobs in our own, our own city instead of being put on these trains back and forth up to Boston. There's only so many jobs. Well, but wouldn't you consider that the offshore wind it has created jobs for people down here? 
Well, from what I've heard, they're coming from Alabama, as far as California and Florida, because they don't have the skill set. And if we have people working uh, at that at that facility there, should I say, uh, at that place there, I mean, uh, there's not. There's probably more outside the state than those who uh, live in in the city of New Bedford that are working there. So this whole thing about job creation is all bull that they they try to sell every time they want to. Uh, spend a lot of taxpayer money, have these big projects. They always say it's going to create a lot of jobs, but they don't tell you where all these people are coming from. Gotcha, man. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Uh, speaking of that, I I was um, driving through New Bedford on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't remember. And I went down Brock Avenue and I went by the Surfside. And so I turned around and I noticed that there was this station wagon pulling into the Surfside. And I said, well, you know, I'll check it out. Let's see. You know, I was actually, I was, I was on a sorbet ice cream type run, if you know what I mean. And I see this person kind of walking and he looks at me. I look at him. We say hi to each other. And then we realize, Counselor Ian Abreu, he bought the Surfside. Yeah. One of the things he said to me uh, as we talked for a few minutes is he wanted to keep that building going to to help the tax rolls and and to hire people here in the in the city of New Bedford. Now, you can't complain about a city councilor who's going down that particular road. 508-996-0500. Hello. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Brian. <laughs> you should say good morning, Sketty. <laughs> because I don't eat so, spaghetti. No, not pus, Sketty, Sketty. But you're so fun. I love you. You're always clowning around. But you're very serious, too, about things. Um, and I'm your a serious buffer, clown. Yes, and your buffer this morning was great, as usual. I don't know how your memory has all that, because I would have totally forgot some of these things without you playing those buffers. Well, thank but, you. So, the, uh, the, not the last gentleman, but the gentleman before that told about the train coming through. I was calling you to tell you that exact same thing that he told you, and um, and so but the thing is, is yeah, the gate came down like he was saying, and it, he, I guess he had a better bird's eye view, but I could hear it. And um, so, what he's forgetting, like it took for all of forty two seconds, sure, but that's not when they're letting people off the train and on the train from that. The, uh, Church Street. Um, yeah, thing. but I think he was actually at an intersection. He wasn't at the at the train station. Right. Well, the train station is right right near there. Mm-hmm. Little. So I don't know how long how long the train itself is going to be. How many um, seating? Uh, I don't even know what they're called, other than the caboose that's driving the train. The passenger but, cars. Right, passenger cars. Thank you. Well, that's um, one of the questions that I've been asking. They're, they're talking about 17 trips to yeah. and from New Bedford. How many yeah, people how many are really going to ride all these these yeah. trains? The passenger cars. How many are they going to have attached to the caboose? And then that will also give you an indication how much longer it will be to wait for people to board in and board on. I Because I can't, they, they're going to have to I, pull I think the train. Eight, I think eight is the normal number and just because yeah we're thinking eight coming all the way yeah. down here there are mm-hmm. stops that are going to be in taunton and middleborough and Middleborough. bridgewater there are three stops in brockton there's the whole brook stop you know there, so there's stops mm-hmm. all the way going up uh, yeah and, there's and a stop in whitman mo- too i believe maybe yeah i think whitman so, is okay. actually a different line but uh, you you could be right but yeah. the, the, the point being is most of those stops have been there already. Down here, it's oh, an entirely man. different ball game. Oh, it's a whole different ball. Right, because this is the end and the beginning of. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, at one point, Plymouth was like that, the beginning of and the end of. But, mm-hmm. you know, we've moved on. So I'm, I'm wondering, do you train, change trains over in Brockton to go into Boston 
No. Otherwise, are, are we going to Braintree and then changing over to a Boston line? No, you're going to go directly into the city. Straight on. Yep. Cool. I will take it for the aquarium, the museum, museum science, you know, anything like that where I don't have to worry about parking and stuff. So I am looking forward to that. But um, 18 stops, they must be basing that on. I know Middleborough, I've gone to that, um, picked up my um, a friend that used to come down and visit from Boston. She took the train from after coming in and to Middleborough. And, um, and I, I forget what I'm trying to say. Sorry, because I got two other questions that has nothing to do with the train. Um, but yeah, at that parking lot was always full no matter what hour. So I imagine Middleborough is where they're going to pick up most of their people. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, I think I think Brockton gets a lot of people. I think I know Braintree gets a lot of people yeah, because I've, I've ridden the train from Middleborough several times, and the the busier stops are the Brockton stops, in particular mm-hmm. downtown Brockton, and yeah. uh, the Braintree mm-hmm. stop, and then as you uh, get closer to the city, yeah, the yeah. big city. Well, yeah. All right, quickly, let, what, what else do you have for me? Yeah. Two quick questions, yes. Okay, so about the New York mayor, every time I go to hear what he did, I'm always getting at the, the end of the news feed. What did he exactly do? And the other question is, that judge, what did he do that he got um, demoted? So I, like- I only know that Eric Adams has been hit up on corruption charges I heard something. I, 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 you know what? Because it's not around here, I really haven't followed it that much. As far as whatever judge you're talking about, yeah, I, you, you're really surpassing me. I'm, I'm studying at the same time, so you, you're gonna have to yeah, clue, clear me, clue me feed. in on that. Yeah, it was just on your news feed about he did something, got demoted, but it went by so quick I couldn't hear it. Hmm. But um, okay, that's all I had for right. you today. Well, cool. Well, thank you much. Hey, have a good time at your reunion. I will. I'm going to have a blast. I hope. Oh, I'm sure you will, Brian. I I found out over the past few days that three of my my friends, well, one um, is sick and she might not make it, but she might make it. The other two, one got got caught in the uh, Helene, the hurricane. Oh, And another one just decided she didn't want to go. Oh, wow. Well, you know what? I well, you'll still have a good time. And, oh, I will. Believe yeah. me, there there's still yeah. plenty of people that I know that are coming. Yeah. I think it's exciting for you. All right, Brian, you have a great weekend. You too. Thank you much. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. Yeah, the fiftieth high school reunion kicks off at five o'clock up in Milford. No, I'm not from Milford, but that's just where they're having it. You have allergies, diabetes, high blood pressure, plus take prescription drugs for your heart. With this service, you could get all of your meds and have them delivered for one small monthly price. MonthlyFeeRx.com. And that leads us to the Brian's Beat quote of the day. The Constitution shall never be construed to prevent the people of the United States who are peaceably citizens that's really peaceable citizens, from keeping their own arms. The Constitution shall never be construed to prevent the people of the United States who are peaceable citizens from keeping their own arms. That quote from Samuel Adams, not the beer, the man. With you until 10 o'clock this morning. Peabody is considering a generational tobacco ban, which means if you are not 21 by January 1st, you're never going to be able to buy a tobacco product in the city of Peabody. That's if the city council passes this resolution. I think it's asinine because... It doesn't stop the people from smoking. You know, one of the reasons uh, that they're doing this, they know that smoking continues to be detrimental to the health and a leading cause of, of cancer. But it doesn't stop someone who turns 21, let's say, after the first of the year from going to another city or town, buying that tobacco product and then going back to Peabody. 
What's worse, Peabody isn't the first community to do this or consider it. What if, what if New Bedford, Dartmouth, Fairhaven, what if they consider something similar? Don't you think that would also be detrimental to the business community? 508 996 500. Hello. Two points, Brian. First of all, on this train on Talking Hill Road, mm-hmm. I didn't think we had commuter rail yet. So they're doing testing. Okay. On to my second point about what's going on in Peabody. Yes. What if you're 21 before January 1st? You'll continue to buy tobacco in Peabody? You can, yes. How does that make sense? You if you want to ban you, something, ban it. Why, why? Well, oh, well, if you're not 21. You're, 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 you're funny. I mean, I, I'm, I'm only saying it facetiously. They're saying we're not outlawing it. They're not prohibiting tobacco. They're just not letting folks that turn 21 after January 1st from being able to buy it in their city. What difference does it make in the long run, whether you turn 21 before January 1st or after January 1st? You tell me. How does that make any logical sense? I'm scratching my head over it and and my scalp is bleeding from all the scratching. This is why people have a problem voting, Brian, because of dumb things like this. And believe me, I'm, I don't like cigarette smoke. Mm-hmm. I can't stand it when, when someone smokes in front of me because of the, the lousy, yucky smell. Not to mention what you said about leading cause of cancer. But that's beside the point right now. These behaviors that we hear about are put upon us by legislators are the main reason why there's voter apathy. I think you're correct. I, I, the sad reality is we've got people that are afraid to to go out and run against these folks to, to knock their butts out of office. Why are they afraid? You tell me. We keep hearing about our mayor. Oh, the mayor is uh, driving the city down the toilet, like one of the previous callers said. How come you mean there's nobody out here? Nobody in this city right now that can stand up and say, I don't believe in this mayor. This is what I want for the people of New Bedford. I think many people that run for office, they believe that government is the end all be all. So you're on the right track. People start like that. But once they get in there, well, what's the job of a politician? To stop the bills or to add on to the bills? You know, Brian, I ride around in the city quite a lot. And one of the things that really bothers me is that, like, if I'm taking a CERTA bus or any vehicle and they're traveling through the city, I hear nothing but ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. The roads, for the most part, are horrible. When is someone going to fix the roads? You tell me. Because I'm not you're saying right. they're all horrible. No, but enough but of them are. I've... Enough of them are, and we all know that. So why hasn't there, there been any progress? I wish somebody from the city would call you guys and explain why there hasn't been much progress. Well, we've heard, I mean, uh, Councillor Abreu uh, mentioned to, to Barry a, a while back that it actually costs a million dollars to do a small patch of of repaving and a million dollars that's that's the, what i recall in the conversation a million dollars for one patch i don't know how big that patch is still a million dollars my goodness well i find it hard to believe i'm just relaying and, and a counselor if i'm wrong about that please yeah uh, you're you're more than welcome to to correct me but it wasn't uh, and it was a figure that made me say, you've got, like you just did, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. But it would be great if somebody ran for office saying that they, they their job, number one, is to fix these roads and to make sure that they are permanently fixed. Of course, folks within government will do their best to make sure that person doesn't win because it's job security for a lot of folks. 
There's an old expression, Brian, and I've heard this on your station. Elections have consequences. They do. They do. Right. We elect the people just as easily as we vote them out. Well, I, the problem I, I is think you're right. We us, elect them. I don't know how easy it is to vote them out. Well, here's the problem. A lot of us who may want to vote them out don't have an alternative, so that's why we don't vote. Because we're trying to figure out who an alternative would be to the one we want to vote out. Hey, well, pardon me if I vote libertarian, but that's me. Hey, thanks that's for the call. I respect that. Thanks for the call. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Yeah. 508-996-0500. I do appreciate your patience. Hello. Morning. Morning. Okay, for that answer with a million dollar patch. Why don't they fix the roads? Well, here's my theory. So all these, like in the south end of New Bedford, where they just ripped out all the cobble stones that they put inside the, the ground and made it so nice that you have to go around these little islands, right? All that money they spent to put, you know what I'm talking about, on Cove Road and Brock Ave, 7-Eleven, yep, yep. all them in that area. Okay, so they, they made that look so nice with the cobblestones and all that. So it cost a lot of money to put that in, right? Go by there. They took it all out. So there's money that could have been patched for the roads. <laughs> then the hurricane barrier dikes. You see how they made the nice walkway for everybody to go up there and jog and ride bicycles and put fencing up and all that. All they did was made a condominium for the, for the my belief, is for the rats that are living in them rocks. Because when they were doing the construction there, where do you think all those rats went? They went into the trip tower buildings. They went into all those homes that are near there. So that's, that place is infested with, with rats. So there's all the money for the roads. That's that's my theory on that. Now, my uh, my second thing is is about the trains. Now, when those trains start moving in, this city's going to get worse. Our river's going to get worse than what it is right now. Because if you what, listen to what listen to what I'm saying, and uh, when that happens, you watch everybody that's on Mass Ave. Have you ever been to Mass Ave? The Boston? Mass Ave in Boston. Yes. Yes, I have. It, it's it's really disgusting. Correct. Uh, especially where, around Mass and Cass. Yeah. Where, where do you think those people are going to end up? Well, that's it. You know that I I, I, I brought that way. up yesterday. Uh, if if you have a city, cities that are taking uh, monies from government, federal government, state government, to, to bring folks down here, I, I, you know, that's part of the problem. Yeah. That is part of the problem. And, and, and that is money that, you know, if I, I'm not one for throwing uh, government tax dollars around. I, I throw them like they're manhole covers. But be that as it may, I think that there's a better use for those funds as we were talking about, let's take care of the infrastructure as opposed to, you know, letting people, you know, moving people from community A to community B, setting up a, a gentrification one way or the other. Right. right. Now, and then one more thing is like, you have, you have you ever brought in anybody to the hospitals around Mass Ave and need a wheelchair? And Only myself. Uh, <laughs> okay, have you noticed? Next time you go, you ask them, tell them you need a wheelchair. And, and what's the answer they're going to give you? They, they're going to tell you they have none. You know why they have none? Because everybody on Mass Ave has the wheelchair that belongs inside the hospital, that belongs to a hospital. If you go by Mass Ave and all in that area, you're going to see nothing but wheelchairs all outside with them with all their, their personal belongings on it, pushing it around. And I actually stopped and I asked the cops, the police up in Boston, if why don't they have enough cogs to go and grab these wheelchairs and put them back where they belong? That makes me upset. It makes me mad because I'm bringing someone to a hospital and they need a wheelchair and they don't have any. So I told them I would go up there on my day off. That's all I got to do is the 311 got, got right to the mayor's office in Boston and gave him my information and told him I would come up on my weekend on my own time is they provide me with a truck and I'll go collect every wheelchair and bring them back where they belong. You know, they never got back to me because they don't care. No, they, they, 
you're, you're messing with other people's game, and, and their game is also their money. I do appreciate your call. Um, it, it, you're hearing the stories. You're hearing the stories. And we're going to hear some more. 508-996-0500. Thank you. Hello. Good morning, Brian. Morning, Brian. <laughs> up, up in Maine, it cost a... Uh, the rule of thumb is a million dollars a mile to construct a brand new road. And the average cost of a highway is uh, $6.46 million per mile. And to patch a road into Bedford costs a million dollars. What does that tell you? What's wrong with this picture? I, You know what? I, I said that figure. I, I, I hope it's correct. But it, if it, even if it's not a million, the price was, was astronomical. The city, the mayor, and I, and I learned to really like the mayor. Uh, he Every major intersection that comes into the city, which is federal money that they've used to re- rebuild them, they're fantastic. But it's sort of like a rat trap. Once you get in the city, you can barely get out. The roads are so bad. And the people that are paying the taxes suffer the most, and especially the people who pay the same rate of taxes in, in some of the poorer areas of the city, still pay the same rate of taxes on the property. And, and the roads are like third world, but they're, they're horrible. Dartmouth Street is a mess. And all the businesses that pay taxes, a fair amount of taxes down on North Front Street, that road's a disaster too as well. But I, what I don't understand is you watch this happen all the time. They dig up the road, they do a bunch of work to it, then they repave it. And then about eight months later, they dig it up again and do some more work to it. And I- What the, are the they doing? Is, Don't you ever wonder that? I mean, how many times do you have to fix the pipe? Or did you put a faulty pipe in the first time? This is a a jobs program. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. It's a jobs program. I don't, I can't, can't they coordinate each other? So that maybe, maybe if it's, if it's gas or maybe if it's water or, or sewage or whatever, can't they coordinate together? And put a plan together and do it all at one time. No, apparently they can't. No. Apparently, it you're, you're taking and money out of somebody's pocket. It's, it's a nightmare. It's and it's always an inconvenience. And you know, and I know a lot of people love unions, but I'm telling you, unions have ruined a lot of a lot of things in this country. I remember when they built the Cloverleaf uh, 195 and Route 140. The men worked unbelievably hard. I was a kid. I was about five or six years old, and I watched them. They built that Cloverleaf, the bridge, everything. They did it in about three months, okay? It took them four years to rebuild it. And and, and for, I, I, it makes no sense at all. I just, you know, there's definitely something wrong. Uh, it definitely is something wrong with that. I got you. Hey, thanks for the call. To it. See you, bye. you too. Hello. Good morning, my friend. Good morning to you. Okay, first I want you to have a good time at your reunion. Thank you. I plan on and, it. Yeah. All right. And second of all, I've been talking about these roads for how long now? Uh, you you, you, you talked about them when I was in the cab. All right. Because, so because we went over bumps together. I uh, yeah, but so the border, and you know, I'm taking that um, SRTA, the big uh, white van, mm-hmm. and and the other day the guy said it's hurting his back, it hurts mine, and the man does nothing about it. Now I called in and he said, oh, we're gonna do Cottage Street. It's on the list. It's coming up in the spring. Spring is coming, gone. Nothing. Nothing's been done. You know, I think we're all on the same page here, and um, Catherine knows how to do good petitions. I wish she would call in and maybe we could write one and maybe uh, everybody sign it and get it done because th- this is something wrong why he can't do the roads. I don't get it. You know, everything else comes first. We're going to have a state-of-the-art soccer field. We're going to have a police station. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. The schools. What about the roads is right. I don't get it in this city at all. I don't know. He comes on and then he goes off and... You never get the answers. It's really, really discouraging. Happens every week, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's disgusting already. These roads are, the whole city's horrendous as far as the roads go. It's it's awful. I don't know when they're going to do something about it. But if everybody signs a petition, maybe something will get done. I'm willing to go forward with it, but Catherine's really good at that, but. So you sign a petition, 
you still would need to. I, I, what, let me back up. What would you want this petition to say? That we as the taxpayers have been uh, in New Bedford traveling on these roads for how long and and what they're causing us distress, you know, as drivers, as um, even the people that work, like I just said. and uh, But they don't have time to call in, so that's what we need is a petition. That way maybe you got to do something to get but him what, to what move. what do you want the petition something. to do? Do you want them to fix the roads? Or is the petition to get the mayor and or city council out of office? What what no, do you want the paperwork the to do? To fix the roads. Fix the roads. Okay. Yeah, if somebody could help with a petition, that would be great. I'd be willing to help with that, too, to go get signatures and sit and get signatures. I'm all for it. Because I've been, I've been humming about this for a long time, you know, and he just blows you off. Like I said, he said a DPI said Cottage Street was on the um, agenda for the spring. Spring is come and gone to nothing. Right now we're in the fall. I, you know, I, I did not hear that part about, about Cottage Street. It does make me wonder why the change, why it didn't happen. Thanks for the call. All right. Brian, yes. let me t- let me just say one thing. You know what? I go down Robeson Street. Why is this? Now, Robeson Street from the top of Shawman Avenue only has been blacktopped all the way down to Cottage. And it didn't even need it. Okay? Because I walk up there every day. And also, there's a man who worked for um, the city. And he told me himself and he got the sidewalks done right in front of his house and he and he got that road done right in that position there that I'm just telling you. Hmm. Now there's something wrong here. It's who you know and who you BL. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for the call. 508-996-0500. Let's try to squeeze one more in before the break. Hello. I'm glad you picked me to Sneak in there, Brian. Can we say a few? You know, I saw you the other day. You're at your sign out in front of the the New Bedford Courthouse. So what, what, what were you doing out there? Well, I was talking about the chief and everything. Ah, your chief. And you did the same thing up at the police station. And underneath the mayor's window with a blow on. At his house? No, at oh. the city hall. Well, you never oh. know. Well, no. I mean, well... That's an opening thing. But why I called in is the gentleman that called in about voting people out, what's the, the, and they don't go vote because what's the alternative, right? And he calls all the time, and I consider that he's, he knows what he's talking about. And he, that's why people don't go and vote. Well, let me tell you people out there, if, if the alternative, I don't care if they put a monkey out there. They, they send him that space, okay? So they're smart enough. Take, just get the person that is there for years, get him out, and the alternative is, even if the other guy, if the monkey wins and nothing happens, get him out. But to sit home and don't vote is ridiculous because you don't know what the alternative is. I do not think that, the, I mean, your city, everybody knows what the city consists of. I'm the one that's out there telling people and they don't want to listen. Hmm. That's all but. but you know, Brian, I it, mean... It, it's it, called it, apathy. You know, the alternative? What would you think about my sign anyways? I didn't see enough of it. I just saw you holding it. Want me to tell you what it said? No, but go ahead. Okay. Oh, go ahead? Yeah. Okay. It says, Chief Paul Oliveira. He's the biggest piece of, you know what, in the New Bedford Police Department. Hippity hop the cartoon cop. He's seen a crime, and he did nothing about it. And I got the picture of him watching Linda Morad illegally touching, which you can't touch anybody, and you know that. That's what the sign says. All right. Well, thank you for okay. enlightening me. I do appreciate <laughs> it. I, you know, okay. I, maybe you're better off with that sign at the police department as opposed to the courthouse because the courthouse is a is a county state type property. And um, although New Bedford police officers do scurry in and out of uh, the district court, police station is certainly 
a, a better place for that. 508-996-0500. Brian, this is Brian's Beat. Yes, I'm in. I'm getting ready to step out. Ken is off today, so Howie's going to be filling in from 9 to noon. Let's take one more before I go. Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, About the roads, the mayor knows we need the roads done and that the roads are atrocious because that's what he tells you when you bring it to his attention. He tells people on the radio, yes, we know, there's a list. I'm sure you're on it somewhere. But have you ever tried to get your hands on the list? And why isn't the list made public? And you'll know exactly because it's a, it's a gripe from the north to the south to the east to the west. Everyone has some areas in their area that's atrocious. Give us the list. Then we'll see if there's a reason that it has to be, you know, done differently. 